Hi guys, Budcat7 here. It is Friday, March 16, 2018, and today we are going to get into our fifth part in the series of videos debunking the mainstream history on the stone walls of New England and New York. And don't forget that um, New York is where most of the stone walls can be found. So, I mean, and it's contiguous in a lot of areas, so it doesn't, uh, you know, have any bearing on state lines or, you know, has anything to do with, you know, internal state stuff. So, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with that. So, in any case, um, this is the fifth in the series, and this one is entitled... 1816, the year without a summer, and um, this is a major, major point and uh, a major, major contradiction to um, Robert Thorson's um, contention that, you know, um, most of the stone walls were built between 1775 and 1825. So, you know, this year without a summer is a huge event that occurred um, during this time. And it's significant in the sense that it is mainstream history. This is not alternative history. Um, you know, this is not um, tinfoil hat, YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah history. This is mainstream history. And, you know, they had no choice to but, you know, to look at this. And, um, you know, um, there are some scholarly articles written about this. So, I mean, this is a major thing, you know. So, um, the last video was entitled um, Specious History. And that's because... Um, you know, this history that Robert Thorson gives in his book, Stone by Stone, um, you know, basically is a, is a superficial history. There's no backstory. There's no historical backstory there. There's no other pertinent information, you know, that, you know, bears scrutiny in his opinion, I guess, you know, because, you know, I've looked into it and, you know, these other points, you know, bear scrutiny and, you know, they're significant. So, um, you know, as I said, my last video in the video series, number four, was called Species History. Uh, this one's called 1816, Year Without a Summer, because this is a very, very significant point um, that seriously calls into question, you know, Thorson's thesis um, on the stone wall, most of the stone walls being built between 1775 and 1825. And if you know the histories and you know the backstories, um, historical backstories, then, you know, it really calls into question. And this one most significantly does. So well, it's something to pay attention to. If you haven't seen my other videos on debunking the history of stone walls, um, please do look for them in my channel. You know, I've numbered them now so you can look at them and I'm going to put them in a playlist too. So pretty soon. So, uh, and also add to in the descriptions other pertinent um, information and videos and uh, articles that you can see. I'll keep on updating that throughout this whole series here. Okay, so, um, as I said, um, this one is about the year without a summer. Oh, and just by the way, some channel news. Um, um, John um, Dolan's video, uh, John Delano's video from SUNY um, Albany um, got taken down by Nat TV. I have no idea why that happened. You can see it in this video here on my last video. Um, I, I put a section of it in here to show, you know, his video because I was talking about him. But it's funny now that, you know, Nat TV for some reason has taken down this video. And uh, I don't know why. I don't know what the reasoning, but I think it's kind of funny that they took it down, um, you know, pretty much during the time that I've been presenting this uh, debunking. And I don't know, maybe they, 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 um, are, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know, but you know, maybe they thought I was going there next, and um, that's exactly where I was going. So I'm sorry, Mr. Delano. I don't know who got Nat TV to take that down, but we're going to your video next anyway. Despite the fact that it got taken down, I I, I know the video, so we're gonna talk about it anyway. So too bad there. Okay, so we're going to talk about the year without a summer, and this is a significant thing. As I said, Dawson says most of the stone wall building took place during, you know, between 1775 and 1825, so that's 50 years. And um, if you consider this year without a summer and its ramifications and what happened during that time, it really, really calls into question the possibility that, you know, these people were even doing anything there. Um, after this time period especially. Um, at the end of my last video, um, we were looking at the list of large volcanic eruptions in the 19th century, and I was talking about this one that happened in 1808. Now, they don't know what this is, and I was, as I was saying, um, this is something to pay attention to the people who look at like Philip Drusnin's channel who I subscribe to and what I like about Philip is is that not only does he show great stuff on his channel but he also gets into some other stuff and he also goes out into the field and shows some of the stuff that you know he's uh, you know knows about. Just like Sylvia on her channel, Harry Hubbard on his channel. Um, you know, other people on other channels that go out there, you know, Sylvia on the New Earth channel, they go out there, they're doing the work, they're going to the sites, they're looking at this stuff, just like I do, so, I mean, if you're not familiar with this, um, you know, take a look at my videos on Mallory, and, um, you know, you'll see stuff there that you haven't seen anywhere else, okay, so back anyway to the year without a summer. Okay, so, um, you know, this is a significant thing, and, and um, if you really know the histories on it here, and again, we're going to look at that list of eruptions here, and this major one in 1808, and again, they don't know what it was, so um, might be interesting to look at that more deeply but here it says Greenland and Antarctic ice samples suggest an undocumented eruption roughly half the magnitude of Mount Tambora occurred contributing to the 1810s being the coldest decade in at least 500 years okay so that this introduces us to the coldest decade, and of course you can hear, um, re, you know, this recounted in diaries, and this was all the northern hemisphere. So, you know, it's recounted in diaries of people in North America and Europe, and you know, you can read about this stuff about how things were going terribly as far as you know crop farming was going in these regions, okay. And then in the same, um, you know, early part of the 18th century, you know, the 19th century in the 1800s, you have Mount Tambora, which created the year without a summer in 1816, okay? And if you read about the year without a summer um, and you hear about the historical events and, you know, what was going on back then, I'll read a little bit to you from that and, you know, under the cultural effects here and some interesting um, notes. And again, like I said, this is not alternative history. This is mainstream history. So it says here, the crop failures of the year without a summer may have helped shape the settling of the American heartland as many thousands of people, particularly farm families who were wiped out by the event, left New England for western New York and the Northwest Territory in search of a more hospitable climate, richer soil, and better growing conditions. Okay? So, you know, as I had mentioned in my other videos, you know, look, this was no mystery that this area of upstate New York and New England was inhospitable to farming. They knew about this a long time ago when the Dutch landowners had tried it with the indentured servants. That didn't work out later in the, seven, in the uh, uh, 18th century. 
Um, you know, they were selling the land for dirt cheap over there for anybody who would be willing to buy it, you know, and become a subsistence farmer there, you know, until this event in the 1800s. So let me read to you what it says here, too. According to historian L.D. Stilwell, Vermont alone experienced a decrease in population of between 10,000 and 15,000 erasing seven previous years of population growth. This is a major point here. And, it, you know, look, it wasn't only Vermont that this was happening. It was happening throughout this whole region. So we're expected to believe that most of the stone wall building that took place between, you know, as Thorson puts forth in his thesis, that, you know, this took place between 1775 and 1825, um, you know, you really have to consider this um, seriously because at that point, people were leaving these places in the Northeast in droves. So, you know, we're, you know, we are, are you know, led to believe, you know, that we, sh we should take this seriously, that, you know, most of the stone wall building was taking place. And again, back to my other video, um, you know, they talked about the population explosion after the post-revolutionary war period, but we discussed the child mortality rates, et cetera, et cetera. You know, go back to my previous video you can look at that stuff but we're led to believe that most of the stone wall okay so uh, you know if people were leaving this region in droves in 1816 after 1816 um and reducing the populations to, you know, serious setbacks in population. And we're expected to believe that during this time, you know, most of the stone wall, it's, it's contradictory. So, um, as I had said in previous videos, this is no mystery. This, this region and in Europe too, where they had similar climates, um, you know, these regions were, were inhospitable to crop farming to begin with, and they knew it, and it had been going quite badly for a long time there. People were leaving these places in droves, okay? Here is a map of um, New York and the Northeast, um, New England and, and New York from um, 1729, and, you know, even if you look at other maps, later maps, these regions where a lot of these walls are built, um, these primitive stone walls, um, were abandoned back then. And even the sort of deeds and stuff that you see, the land surveys that you'll see in um, John Delano's um, videos and the one that they removed there, um, you know, there's areas of New York State, you know, upstate New York, where these walls were abandoned a very long time ago, and they say, well, you know, the reason, you know, we just don't have any information on those areas, you know, but, you know, my contention is that those areas were, were abandoned or never even inhabited back then. There's just, there's no evidence of it being there through land surveys or whatever it might be. They say the absence of them is just means that they don't have any documentation on it, but, you know, there's good reason to believe that these areas were never occupied by anybody back then. And, and even if they were, they were abandoned a long, long time ago. And during the time that Thorson says that most of the stone wall building was taking place. So we have to believe that people were leaving this area in droves after 1816, okay, to better areas, right? But yet most of the stone wall building was taking place during this time, according to Thorson, okay? So, I'm sorry, this is extremely contradictory to what he says. And let's say even if he said, oh, okay, you know, that sounds okay, you know, then it would reduce the time period in which most of the stone wall thing would, building would have to take place. So, it's ridiculous. It's, it's nonsense, okay? As I said, if you look into the historical backstories and the other events that were occurring at these, this time... You know, it seriously challenges it. And don't forget, you had the War of 1812 in between this, you know, and, you know, I think people have a sort of, you know, um, you know, uh, 
standardized belief on, you know, what was going on back in the colonial period there and, you know, how many people were on board with, um, you know, the revolution because, you know, Thorson says, you know, later on in, you know, in this article, which, you know, gives excerpts from his book, he's actually articles, not an interview, it's a book review, but, you know, this guy takes excerpts from Thorson's book, which I don't have to show you, but, here, you know, he says, you know, Thorson writes, you know, the uh, farmers throughout the region began to look inward at their farms, not as a safe haven from war, but out of pride in being American. Their pride was reflected in a way they painstakingly refashioned the piles of stone, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, but, you know, if you look at scholarly articles about, you know, the revolution and what was going on with the people back then, here's a scholarly article from the History News Network, but they're, you know, it's, they're basing their article here on other scholarly articles, um, you know, written by, you know, uh, academics. Only one third of Americans supported the American Revolution, okay? And this article goes on to say that, you know, one third of them were British loyalists and another third of them were ambivalent to the whole thing. So, again, you know, this whole thing, yeah, you know, look, you know, maybe, you know, there were some people who did, but you have to also remember, too, is that, you know, thinking that all of a sudden these British loyalist minds were changed, you know, after, you know, the revolution and, you know, you had plenty of people, look, you know, and a military objective is to stop the food source, okay? So I'm sure plenty of people in the New England area and New York had plenty of problems with the British during the Revolutionary War on their farms, shutting down their farms, you know, causing these people to be exiled from their property. And I'm sure there were other ones who just said, yeah, go ahead, take whatever you want. I'm all for the British and all kind of stuff. So look, this whole thing where you think, you know, that all these people were rah, 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 you know, after the American Revolution, well, you you know, look, there's reason to believe that, you know, it took a long time in shaping America. And even mainstream academics say that America didn't really get, you know, took its real full shape in all aspects until after the Civil War. So this whole, you know, beginning period was, you know, very spasmodic and, you know, it, it's not exactly what you think. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're supposed to believe that all of these people were, yeah, 